This is a PowerPoint on the Nathria suspects. Starting, of course, with Demon Hunter and Artificer Zymox. Uh, Relic Demon Hunter was actually incredibly, incredibly powerful. It's stint and standard. It was nerfed. Still was good. It just dominated a lot of different formats, as especially as the best Demon Hunter archetype by far. It was incredibly powerful. It uh, could be built around very efficiently. It took up about nine cards in your deck, so you had so much flexibility for this ultra-powerful archetype. It was genuinely so good. Uh, the thing about it in Wild is that it's not that it's bad. It would actually be quite good in Wild. It's that there aren't 21 other good enough cards in Demon Hunter to make a slower style of Demon Hunter that makes use of the Relics playable. Uh, if you actually remember from this era, the Refeal season, they revealed Relic Vault first. Not any of the other Relics, just Relic Vault. So when it came out, people had no idea what Relics were, and it was incredibly funny to see the memes at the time about how no one knew what Relics were. Uh, I couldn't really find any good ones for this, so I like that really display what it was, but I found this one not a great one, I'm going to be honest with you, but I couldn't really find anything that would display the feeling of the of the people at the time otherwise. Then for Druid, you have Cecily with the Fake Court. This was... I just got a phone call. Uh, Cecily was very was pretty good in like the Death Rattle oriented uh, decks of Nathria Druid. It kind of fell off very hard and wasn't really able to make much of a splash in standard past that point. Like, I never saw this deck in any of the lists of standard when I would pay attention. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I just missed it, but it didn't really seem to ever pop up, especially as time went on. You had better and better and better Druid cards. Cecily just kind of doesn't do much, uh, is my understanding for it. There's just not really any reason to use it, especially in Wild. Like, there's just no reason to use this card over literally anything else. If you want to mana sheet a lot, you just play Aviana and ENR, or I guess Aviana Kuhn at the time, hadn't been reverted, but you could have done that just as time goes on. Cecily just doesn't really do anything. A lot of people tried this in like a Taunt Druid in Wild, and it was just completely useless. Like, you don't benefit from having Cecily out at all, and it's not, and Cecily is a card that wants to be cheated out, but you can't cheat it in any way, any meaningful way. So Cecily never really took off in wild it and like i'm saying it just i never saw it in standard maybe i'm missing something maybe it, there were some decks that did run it but whenever i would look at you know like meta reports things like that i never saw it anywhere in standard then for hunter you have erolon this card is one of the most nerfed cards in hearthstone history without being a good card uh you might be saying how is that possible because of wild seeds the wild seed package had been nerfed four times and erolon is the worst of the wild seed cards this, if this card had come out just individually on its own and none of the other YLT cards, it probably would have never been nerfed. It probably wouldn't even be that great. It would have been a fine card, but it wouldn't have been anything special. But, of course, the other YLT cards are were significantly better, especially in standard, that it made, you know, it made Aerolong get nerfed four times. Unreal, unreal that it did that. But Stag was nerfed, Bear was nerfed, Fox was nerfed. And, you know, they eventually were fully reverted, and Erlon saw a little bit of play in Wild after that. But, again, as time went on, people just realized Erlon's not very good. It's None of the Wild Seeds actually see play anymore in, in Wild, which is insane to consider that this package was nerfed four times for Standard. And then, literally, right at ro uh, the revert time, like, rotation, they just weren't good. That should tell you just how insane the power level between Nathria and Wild and... Or like, the power level between Nathria to Showdown in the Badlands was in Wild. That a card that was literally breaking standard was incredibly powerful in Wild. Can't see play anymore, and it's only been a year. That's insane. Then for Mage, you have Kelfazad, the Inevitable... Uh, this card was so good because Skeleton Mage was just really powerful in standard. It even got nerfed. The location went from 2 to 3 mana, so Skeleton Mage was very powerful. It's definitely one of my favorite uh, archetypes for Mage because it's a archetype that makes you actually do things. I know, right? Crazy. An actually progressive archetype for Mage, an aggressive archetype, progressive, like makes you actually progress the game state rather than just hiding behind your ice blocks and your solid out. Oh, solid out by came out in this expansion, didn't it? Yep. Uh, it's just, Skeleton Mage is very, it's something Mage doesn't have. An archetype that actually functions 
and is minion oriented and aggressive. Those three things Mage does not have. So that's an instant win in my book for uh, the Skeleton Mage. Is it playable in Wild? Not really. It's actually only like missing out on a little bit in Wild. I think if you bumped the mana cost on like uh, Deathborn, which is the six mana spell down to five, and then Kel'Thuzad down to like maybe seven, I think they would actually be a somewhat competent archetype in Wild, but they're never going to do that, so unfortunate. Then for the Paladin, you have Stuart the Steward. I mean, this card is just... It's bad. It never really took... it. The only deck that would ever play this card is Odd Paladin, and it wasn't good in Odd Paladin. So that should tell you how terrible this card is, that, like, it, it obviously was never going to see any play in Standard. Uh, Silverhand Recruit decks never work in Standard unless they are, like, absurdly powerful. And obviously, this card is, again, not good enough for Odd Paladin and Wild, so where would it ever see play in Standard? Uh, it's just unreal levels of weak. There's no reason to play this card at all. Like, giving your Silverhand Recruits plus 3 plus 3 on that Death Rattle isn't even very good, because you have to have Stuart die, comes down on turn 3, and then, like, you'd have to get maybe 2 or 3 activations for it to have been worth it, or you could have done anything else. You could have done literally anything else for your 3 mana, and Stuart just only gets worse as the game goes on, because it's like a value orientation card, but it's only good if you can play it on turn 3. It's just genuinely terrible. Then for Priest, you have Pelagos. Pelagos is actually very powerful in both Standard and Wild. Bless came out this expansion, which really, you know, took Pelagos over the top. You know, in Standard, it was, you know, a lot slower. You could actually make use of Pelagos, gain a lot of value from it on your minions for Bless, things like that. But in Wild, you had, you know, Divine Spirit. You had, uh, you have Potion of Madness to steal enemy minions and give them charge. You have your Nomergon Infantryman, which is a 3-mana 1 fourth charge, which benefits incredibly well from Pelagos, giving it uh, you know, the attack and health set of higher. It was just such a powerful card. Uh, it kind of fell off uh, in Inner Fire as time went on. You just had better and better options. It became better to just use the potion if you, uh, only, and then use your Radiant Elementals and things like that. You don't need Pelagos. It's 3-mana attacks. Cards like Pelagos just don't really do anything in Wild because of that, you know, three mana attacks adds up a lot. Uh, if it were two mana, maybe, but it would be incredibly broken at two mana. It would probably warp the entire game. So we're, pro we're probably happy that it's not, but it is a bit sad that cards like this just can't really function in Wild because the format is so strict because of horrific power creep that has come to the game over the last few years that Pelagos just can't do anything. Then for Rogue... You have Necrolord Draka. This card is so strong. It's one of the few cards that didn't get reverted from like this Nathria era of these legendaries. It used to be four mana. It was so warping in standard. It warped standard. Miracle Rogue from Nathria. It completely warped standard. Almost none of the cards were reverted. It was just unreal levels powerful. You would you would get like a 12 attack weapon very consistently. It was absolutely giant, and your opponent couldn't do anything. There were, there were games where you would get, you know, 15, 16 attack weapon on turn three. And what is your opponent supposed to do? They either draw, like, Rust Rot Viper, or they lose the game. It's unreal how powerful Necrolord Draka was in Standard. It was fine in Wild, to my uh, memory as well, but the other Miracle Rogue cards were just a lot better than Draka was, because you don't really care about this weapon. You, you cared about, you know, getting your Giants, getting out your big Edwin, things like that. Then for Shaman, you have Baroness Vosh. Baroness Vosh is a very unfortunate card, because if it came out in... Uh, 2021, it would have actually been very, very, very powerful because you had Revolve and you had Bog's Fine Knuckles, which were both incredibly powerful cards. It did have Primordial Wave, but Primordial Wave was just, it was a very powerful card, don't get me wrong, but not enough to make Varanus Vosh and Evolve Shaman like incredibly, incredibly powerful like it was during, uh, during 2020 or yeah, during 2020 when you had, you know, Desert Hair, Revolve, Bog Spine Knuckles, things like that. And then Evolve Shaman just hasn't been the same since uh, that era of Hearthstone. It hasn't really come back, even in Standard. It just hasn't really been able to take off. Except if uh, if you talk about it Blazing, Evo Blazing Invocation, I think it's called. I, I, I got the name wrong, and I still don't remember what the name of the card is, I'm going to be honest, in Standard with... Uh, your Wild Pond Null and Nepshalon, that was very good, but I mean, this Baroness Bosch never really got to do anything. This card, in theory, should be very powerful, but like, if 
It's just, it's so expensive. Evolve Shaman needs, like, wide expensive cards if they want to do anything, like your Desert Hairs, like your Serenade Chain Gang, like your Doppelganger, or Doppelgangster in the past. Baroness Vosh just doesn't really do anything. It's a value-oriented Evolve card that doesn't really matter in either format. Then for Warlock, you have Imp King Reform. Imp Warlock was incredibly powerful in Standard. It's I, it's arguably the best zoo archetype of all time. It was utterly dominant for a long time as uh, for Imp King Reform. Uh, it received a few nerfs, if I remember correctly, but then they gave it cards like No Fin... Uh, what is it called? I actually had it right. No Fins Impossible. Uh, and it would give you the Murloc Imps... And that was very good. Uh, it's, you know, it's two mana. Uh, Call of the... Not Call of the Wild. Uh, what is it called? Soul of the Forest. Sorry. That was just very good. And M. King or Fong really took from there. Then you have Decimator Olgra in Warrior. And this card is great. It saw a lot of play in Standard. It's incredible in Wild Black Rock and Roll Warrior. There isn't really much to say about it because it's just so efficient at what it does. It clears the board very well. It does a lot of damage face. It benefits incredibly well from buffs. It's just unreal what this card can do for decks like that that it really really does shine when you may are able to make it work of course you know ogre is from mancrick you know it's mancrick's wife that you can't find and then when mancrick does eventually draw it you know you see that she died in the spell art it's very, so it's very funny this card to just anyone that anyone that knows the mancrick story is just so so goofy and decimator ogre is definitely one of my favorite cards especially it's probably my favorite of these cards if I had to think about it, and a lot, it's a bit, it's a big, big, big favorite of warrior players. It just, it does everything, you know. It does damage. It clears the board. It benefits from your buffs. It does absolutely everything you want it to do. I know I said that twice, but some cards just don't do everything you want them to do. Some cards aren't perfect at their job, and Decimator Olgra is absolutely perfect at its job. But yeah, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me, you think down below, what's your favorite one of the suspects? Uh, what's your least favorite? Who do you think did it? The answer is none of them, of course, because Sire Nathris didn't die. Uh, Murloc Holmes really not that great at figuring out his job, but yeah. Uh, you can join the expansion giveaway if you post your favorite Hearthstone card down below, uh, or you can join the member giveaway, which is a second one if you become a member on my channel. They're going to be for the uh, expansion, upcoming one, Perils in Paradise. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, Darker than they've ever been. Oh,